Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. Uh, it's Marvin speaking. We're going to get straight into a video uh, by Talk TV and Kevin O'Sullivan that talks to Mike Neville, a former Met detective. And uh, it's funny because Kevin Sullivan had turned around and said it's strange they took so long to find him uh, where he was uh, very close to where his phone last pinged. Uh, let's get straight into uh, the video. Come on, Mike, because you are a, a search expert, former head of the search unit uh, in the Met Police, uh, so you'll have some uh, interesting observations, I'm sure, about the Jay Slater case. So, uh, missing Tenerife Brit, been uh, disappeared for 29 days. Uh, it was 29 days ago that uh, we heard that he phoned a friend uh, in the holiday zone. He was in this remote area on the north of the island. Uh, now, that phone call was made from uh, a place just a few yards from where his body was found yesterday after 29 days. Now, it's difficult terrain, I get that, but that seems a bit strange. Why did it take 29 days yeah. to find him so close to where the last report of him was? Well, to clarify, I was the head of a missing person. Okay, well, so, so with that, I would say uh, I'm surprised, you know, given the proximity. But looking at the terrain where you've got a helicopter actually winching the body out, how far, I'd be interested to know how deep is the ravine that he was actually uh, found in. What surprises me is how the, the, the Guard of Seville, the Spanish uh, National Police, have said, we're not searching, but then they were yeah, that, searching. That's what I wanted to ask you. They made a big thing. But we were told that um, they didn't want people scoping the area or uh, making a big deal uh, over it, which people were making a big deal because they wasn't actually talking to us. So the communication uh, was a big problem uh, between the police, the media and the public and uh, I think the uh, basically Spanish police could have been more honest up front in what they were doing and asked for calm because I think people have been on side with them because they've asked for calm and honestly all we want it is the public is, is them to come out and tell us the truth but Yes, we've um, we have found a body, but we've got half the story. It was two Sundays ago. We've called off the search, but they hadn't. So there was this strange uh, lack of communication uh, with the public. Uh, there were no press conferences. There were no posters put up. Uh, no announcements. No calls for help. Uh, the only I, I honestly think if it did happen here, um, the press conferences by the police. They want the media to know what's going on. They want the public um, to, to be on side with them just in case we can help them. Someone might have been out there in that area because the police hadn't been talking or um, wanting too many people to get involved or the British police to actually come over there and help search. It, this could have been made a lot easier for them uh, to have all this extra help and being more honest with the public. That's all we wanted. You know, a boy had gone missing and he was found dead and it took him nearly 30 days uh, to find him. And and yet, there's still more questions to be asked. And I, and I think people are going to be asking questions for a long, long time. The only thing they did uh, was to lie and say they called the search off when they hadn't. It was How bizarre. Odd. It was odd in the sense that if you look back, we, we're as guilty in this country. If you look at the Nicola Bully uh, um, investigation where she sadly drowned in Lancashire, the Lancashire police messed all the PR, PR up. They, they painted a false narrative about her life, which was eventually found out. And with this as well, they've created this, oh, we've stopped searching. And then the vacuum is then filled, you know, with uh, stolen Rolex watches, uh, drug dealers, uh, uh, missing bolts and all sorts but you know we still don't know that until the you know the Spanish police tell us whether this was um, uh, uh, basically a story which is true or to go down you know I do think it was you know police over here they would have turned around and said look um, that's not the case that's all we need to hear and then we can put that narrative out of it. All right, no watch, no gangsters at the end of the day. So all we've got is that misadventure. He went off, 
wasn't feeling too good, decided to um, make his way down to the sea and fell into a ravine. But what about the, you know, the other questions which needs to be answering at the end of the day? It, it still doesn't add up uh, why they kept quiet on a lot of things and still haven't. We still haven't got a lot of the answers that we want. And a lot of people on this side, you look at the messages, it speaks for itself. Lots of stuff. And if they just kept people informed that we're continuing the search, they could have asked some more specialist help. There's money there apparently that they could have used to call in all sorts of specialist search teams who've got expertise about going down these ravines. And he may have been found uh, sooner. But it would say, I mean, the only, I suppose, good thing about the whole thing is at least the family's got some closure. It's not the end that they would have wanted. But the worst scenario is that somebody is simply missing forever and there's no end, end result. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose it's uh, it, obviously his family are very, very upset, uh, and uh, they they're asking serious questions yes. of the uh, Spanish police force there. Uh, uh, but um, I suppose at least it brings some closure. It does, it does yeah, that, it's important to find the kid, but it does look as if this is a kid. It's his first trip abroad. He's ended up in a weird place, and he's just fallen off a mountain. It would seem so. I mean, we know he was got. He's got a conviction for a serious offence. We know that person he was with was a drug dealer. There's all these uh, bad smells around the whole thing. But it would seem that well, we'll hear from the post mortem and the toxicology. But it would seem it's a sad accident. He's fallen down a. A ravine. Yeah, sad end uh, to uh, a great mystery, but I think the mystery has to an extent been yeah. solved, but still questions to be asked about this odd police search. Uh, and the family uh, wants some questions answered, but at least they know, uh, at least they've got a body. It's very, very yeah. important yeah. that moment. Uh, by the way, while you're here, I've got to break this uh, news. Uh, great I just want to say that um, basically, uh, you know, the family apparently are getting their own investigation department uh, into this. Um, so I'll attach the part two um, onto this uh, video as well. So that's going to be interesting to, to, to obviously see what his mum and dad uh, want to do and about their own sort of private investigation and what they want to know. Yeah, so we're going to move on um, to foot. This is by the Metro uh, online tabloid newspaper. Footage emerged earlier today of the, 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 the uh, thickly forest inaccessible area where the apprentice bricklayer's body was found on Monday. Rescue teams shared um, a clip of the uh, densely wooded area surrounded by steep rocky cliffs close to the Air and B. Uh, the Airbnb in Mesca, uh, Tenerife, uh, where 19-year-old Slater was last uh, seen on June the 16th. Although the full autopsy will not be completed until next week, the body was found alongside Jay's clothes and possessions and Spanish police. They said all the evidence suggests the remains are those of the young British man who disappeared. And that is one of the pictures. Former idea of that the body is expected to take place next week, but that's the picture of um, maybe the ravine that uh, they were looking in and found his body or a ravine that's gonna be like that. That's quite a drop if he, um, you know, hit the rocks and fallen down. Uh, that could be instant death or um, certainly uh, basically awful you know because that looks a long way down and especially uh, that they were winched, the people were being winched down into those um, areas because they actually couldn't get there on foot because it was so dangerous and steep and rocky um, so that is awful to be honest with you and anyone like I said who's thinking of going out there just be very very careful sort of going off the, the beaten track in their first comments so far since the Grim Police discovery yesterday, uh, so, I mean, this was a few days ago, Spanish officials re um, representing the investigating judge in the town of Masca said, in reference to the British citizen Jay Slater, the autopsy with the full identific identification of the body and the causes of death will take time, which is fair enough, we've got to give them some time. But there's very little doubt um, about the identity and the uh, 
etiology, the documentation he was carrying corresponds to that of Jay Slater and everything is pointed to an accidental fall, although that is unofficial pending to the final report. So they've got to be, do more checks and be thorough. And I'm wondering whether um, his parents would sort of um, do checks when the body comes back to the UK as well. The official speaking are on conditions of um, anonymity, as it's normal in Spain, said the court is saying that official identification will not know until next week. Fair enough. Uh, following the discovery, Jay's grief stricken mum, Duncan, has since demanded to know how police missed the body during the two week search in the area. I mean, there are many questions uh, such as um, why they missed it because it was so close to the ping and um, was it put back there? Um, there's so many still questions people are answering um, about that. And it was funny how uh, the, the Dutch professional searchers had come in and then the body was basically found not long after they came. So, it, you know, it could have been a coincidence, but there's still a lot of questions out there. Debbie is completely devastated, his mum, a family source told The Sun. Uh, it's the news they've all been dreading. She has a lot of questions which she hopes will be answered in the coming days. It hasn't completely sunk in yet. The hardest thing for her is to hear he was found so close to the original search sites. It's hard to take. It means it's entirely possible they have walked past his body while searching for him. That's true. That is very, very, very true. If the body was there at that time, it seems incredibly so many people walked that area and yet he was so close. As we have seen in the mountainous terrain and ravines, it, it, it does happen no matter how hard that is to believe. The Guardia Civil, which is the Spanish police, said in the statement after 29 consistent days of searching, the lifeless body of the young man has been found in the massacre area it does look i think if you're not if you don't know where you're going you've got no water and uh if, you know you've been on a a session for quite a few days uh, and you go out into the wilderness it's, it's it's that kind of wilderness you can see the terrain is very very difficult to move about uh but like i said we you know we will hopefully get the answers sometime next week of the full investigation in, um, you know, how he passed. Given the uh, complexity of the case, the discovery has been possible thanks to the tireless and discreet search in which the natural space was preserved. Uh, okay, I mean, there are questions and why. Um, they said they stopped searching and technically the case was, was closed, but we had, um, uh, other people in the areas, TikTokers, YouTubers, uh, other investigators that went out there and said there were still small searches going on. Maybe they didn't want to, uh, uh, basically, it to be national news or um, especially big news in the UK. And that's why I think the scale of the operation involved, involving multiple units had been suspended, but um, it was always going on in the background. But like this, like, the article said it, they never stopped looking for Jay, which is fair enough, but I think people would rather know because I think people were fuming that they actually um, stopped searching, which led to a lot of people um, going on different stories that he might have been kidnapped, then there was a gang involved, or uh, basically the, the boats, um, uh, someone being picked up in a car near where he went missing. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. And I think it's a lot to do with the way the police come across. I think they were very secretive um, after the 14 days and no one knew what was going on. And I think um, things turned left from there. We've always said the terrain is very difficult and that the search was complicated. Slater went missing on June the 16th after attending an after party at a remote Airbnb following a night party at a music festival in Playa de la America's Tenerife. But it wasn't an after party at the end of the day because um, one of the people out of there went to bed and I think uh, that 
Jay must have been talking to other, 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 other gentlemen downstairs or the other guy should I say downstairs after leaving the property at around 8.30 a.m. he called his friend Lucy Maylor and told he's lost in the middle of nowhere with no water, a cut on his leg and 1% on his phone it was the last time he was ever heard from a huge search team was deployed in the desperate attempt to find the missing team but it was suspended two weeks later on the 29th of June after failing to locate him obviously um, this is uh, basically this um, read ups on the Metro at the end of the day. I'm just going to read something by former uh, detective Mark Williams, who assisted the local authorities with their efforts, speaking to the mirror about the search team. Uh, difficulty in finding him. Mr. William Thomas said three weeks ago, I met with his, his family and said, I and my team would do all we could to get the answers. He did um, pry into a few things and uh, contact Ayub and I think possibly uh, the other guy Ayub's friend um, who probably didn't want to be known because um, the case is very very big which is fair enough and like I've said um, in the last video they were allowed to go home as they weren't technically nothing to do um, with the case but like I said um, questions um, want to be asked is why it took so long um, to find him and you know the questions out there again um, was his body put back there uh, we don't know and I just hope that this private investigator who's working for the family maybe do get some closures because you know it's just not myself asking these questions but the family his family are asking these questions why so long but it just needs to be broken down so people can understand it and can finally say okay we've got the truth and we can move on from this but hopefully um, next week the post-mortem uh, a closer one may uh, give us something else to actually go on uh, don't forget to subscribe to streamline entertainment and follow the channel thank you for the old subscribers who supported me from day one since 2023 and the new subscribers um, there will be other topics um, coming up um, as well over the next few days so look after them there's a lot to um, to go through but this topic of obviously Jay Slater going missing has dominated the news and there are thousands of thousands of articles out there now and once again my condolences go out to his family and I hope that they do get the answers that they want so obviously his mum and dad will think well um, we've got the majority uh, of uh, basically what happened to Jay and why it took so long but hopefully that will come in the next few days or weeks or so thank you wherever we are in the world take care of yourselves